We have shoe operations. They're very distinctive, but they're vertically integrated. We have a mine. The mine's lithium rock. And then that rock gets fed into an industrial pre-chemical plant where we process that rock into lithium materials. And at that, we are producing zero carbon lithium. And so we're the only company in the world that produces zero carbon lithium in scale. And how, I'm, as Alex pointed out, margins look great, at least according to the results and cash costs uh, down 22%. How does that play out? I'm just thinking if I'm a car manufacturer, I probably want the cheapest lithium I can get my hands on because I also want to make money. That's the whole point. There isn't a green premium. Uh, we have been able to premiumize our product based on different attributes. The product has a chemical and a physical characteristic, which, which brings actual measurable cost savings of 20 to 30 percent to the supply chain, uh, either the car maker or the battery maker, whomever owns the product within the supply chain will benefit from those cost savings. That's the basis for premiumization. And we're very, let's say, reasonable about it. We have a commercially win, commercial win-win approach where we take about 10% of that and then the client takes about 20 to 20% 20 of that. So it's a win-win situation, but there's no green premium. Everybody wants it. Nobody wants to pay for it. Exactly. That's 100% what, what, what I keep hearing about as well. So what enabled you to do this sustainably in this area? Like, is it, can you replicate this anywhere in any mine and then, uh, and then concentration facility? Or was there something specific to this? There are a number of factors. The first factor, let's talk about scope one. When you when you think about the carbon load of a product, you need to think about what goes inside your operations, which is scope one, and then the kind of power, energy used to, ro to run these operations, which is what we call scope two, and then the effect that your product is going to have in a supply chain, which is scope three, right, which is where oil and gas, for example, has a problem. So when we when we made this investment here, uh, uh, which 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 was now twelve years ago, the objective was to reach eventually uh, a point where we would deliver the most sustainable lithium in the world. We ended up going zero carbon, but we started with scope one, meaning we designed and we chose uh, technologies and a processing method that were not aggressive to the environment. They were not going to leave a, a serious. Uh, unabatable uh, carbon footprint, such as tailing dams. We have zero tailing dams because we developed a dry stacking module. Water, the use of water in our industry is highly problematic. We use sewage water and we, 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 we recycle that water. So we have what we call uh, recirculation, reuse of sewage water. So we don't use fresh water. So it's zero fresh water. Right. So these were elements. And then we chose separation methods that do not use toxic chemicals. So we have another zero, which is zero toxic chemicals. So this all happens in that industrial plant. So then you move to the mine. What is the responsible of carbon footprint inside the gate? Scope one on the mine is mainly diesel and nitrates in explosives, ANFO. So we went out to minimize that. Uh, trying to add bland biodiesel, biofuels, biodiesel with diesel, and then using electronic uh, triggers, electronic explosives to minimize the use of nitrate. So we obtained a pretty sizable reduction. The result of it, right, unabated, like result of all of that, after going through the hard to abate, after all of it, is that we ended up with inside one, meaning 0.26 tons of carbon, per ton of material. So we did all that work and we got to that low level, which meant that then we could go out and offset the rest with credits because we are inside one, which meant we had to do a huge effort to be uh, to be inside one. Comparing to our peers in the Salars in South America is typically five tons of carbon per ton. And we were at 0.26. In uh, other mines in other parts of the world, it's 15 tons of carbon mm -hmm. in certain high cost mines in Asia it's 45 tons. So uh, it was an enormous amount of work on scope one. So we only, scope two though. Yeah. Yeah. No, go, go ahead. We only have about um, the 30, 40 seconds left, but I do want to know if you can replicate this elsewhere. 
Well, that's the point. I mean, scope two, we were blessed with a grid in Brazil, which meant that, you know, we have access to abundant, available, renewable uh, uh, energy. So that also contributes a lot because our scope two is green. It's 100 percent renewable. So we ended up with a situation that's hybrid. Could we replicate? Yes, we can replicate scope one but then we will need to plug it into a renewable source. So that's kind of the uniqueness of what we do, is a combination of technology with a highly benign a grid.